Grace and peace, everyone. Grace and peace. Grace and peace to each and every one of you. We thank God for all things. all things. Please let me know if you can hear me. Amen. And we are thanking God. We are thanking God. <clears throat> I think you can. I think you can. So we, uh, today's today's actually the, the, um, uh, the, um, the third day of our fasting or uh, what's today's the fourth day today's the fourth i don't have my watch on but we're grateful and we're excited about what god is doing <clears throat> because god is doing something amazing and that is so phenomenal and i want to encourage each and every one of you on today that no matter where we are in life and no matter what the storms are god is still in control amen i was trying to see uh Okay, and so we're, we're just grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. Um, and we thank God today that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice in it and be glad. And you have a little difficulties because you know sometimes of these Wi Fi's. And listen, y'all, I literally went to um, Starbucks and I was like, oh my God, I'm able to go to Starbucks and sit down and, and uh, get me some. Um, this uh, medicine bomb tea and stuff. And I was like, I could be able to sit down and deal with that. And then how be ever Wi-Fi was acting crazy. Signal was acting crazy. I said, man, you can't win for losing in this place. Right. <clears throat> and, um, but I said, you know what? I'm going back to my car and I'm going to figure this out, right? Some kind of way. And I'm grateful that I did. So we thank God today. Let's go to the word of God. I want to go back to um, Hebrews, um, the word of God is because the word of the, 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 the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And no matter what state of being or state of mind you may be in, I want you to always be encouraging God and know that God is able to do the exceedingly and the abundantly above all that we think and acts according to the power that work it down on the inside of us. Amen. And God is doing something great in all of our lives. And no matter how many disappointment times you may have or disappointing times or frustrating times or aggravating time or just a place that you say, I just want to say to heck with all of this. I'm going to give up. I don't want to do it anymore. However the situation is, I want you to know that God is still able to do the exceedingly. No matter what the enemy is trying to do, God is still able to do the exceedingly. First thing we learned today in Proverbs, the third chapter, uh, we talked about the reward of God's wisdom. And today I want to talk to you about uh, kingdom uh, attachment. And in order for us to be to advance in God, as Hebrews, the sixth chapter says, we must understand what Proverbs three says. Proverbs three says, my child, if you truly want to, long, to want a long and satisfying life, never forget the things that I have taught you. Right. Follow closely, look, follow closely every truth that I've given you, then you will have a full and rewarding life. Now, that's in the true passion version. But when we go to the King James version, it said, my son, right, forget not my laws, but let them let but let thine heart keep my commandments for the length of days and long life and peace shall they shall they add unto you. Keeping the law and the commandment of God will allow God, bless you, Elder Baker, will allow God to do what? Will allow God to bring you to a place of long life, 
peace and peace long length for days long life and peace and why is god doing this why is god's plan why is god's concern concerning these matters because god has a plan and the plan that god has for our life is far more is far more valuable than the failure or the defeat that the enemy would try to bring to us don't you know the enemy's plan is to utterly destroy us but god says in jeremiah 29 and 11 he said i know the thoughts that i think towards you they're good they're not evil and they have an expected end he said i know the thoughts i know what i plan i i know what what my design is i know that i'm calling you to greatness and i'm calling you to a place of of success and a place of greatness so what i need y'all to do is get to this place and tell the enemy no matter what's going on i'm going to stand firm on the kingdom attachment because jeremiah 29 let us know that god has a plan god has has his plan concerning us and the plan that God has for us is far more valuable watch this far more valuable than any other plan that the enemy could ever conjure up greater than Donald Trump greater than uh, uh, Vice President Harris right greater than any other plan God has a plan and his plan is to keep us attached to the kingdom and not to socialism or, or the, the, the rhetoric of theology or the propaganda of tradition. God doesn't want us to be misinformed and disinformed concerning what he's called for us to do. God is calling us to greatness. God is calling us so that we can advance in him. Are you hearing me? God wants to destroy all of this satanic rhetoric about his kingdom and about the theology of his word. Some stuff is people's perception. And God said, listen here, uh, we want to be done away with people's perception. We want to get rid of people's perception. What we want to do is birth people into a place that God designed for them. Amen. God designed a place for us. God, God designed a place that we can be in him. Because why? Because in him we live and move and have all of our beings. It's in him we live and move and have all of our beings. Come on, encourage somebody to say, in him, in him who God, he, we live and move and have all of our beings. No matter what the enemy want to do, everything that the enemy think he can do against us is in the will of God. God says, and listen, listen, God say, listen, don't you fool yourself. Don't you become discombobulated. Don't you become disorientated. Don't you get your place in a, and become so frustrated because the propagandas are the um, are propagating of all of the stuff that the world is doing. This misinformation and disinformation, all of this rhetoric about what God's saying is this and God is saying that. You have to build a relationship with God so that God can speak directly to you concerning the matters of the heart. I hope I'm making sense to somebody. I said, I hope I'm making sense to somebody. So what God said is, what I want to do is, I want to shift you. I want to shift you. I want to shift you. I want to shift you to a place. And 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 watch this, y'all. Can I tell you something? Why do God want us to shift? Because he has something greater for us. Come on, I need somebody to put that in the comments. God has something greater. Or matter of fact, just put greater. Greater. God has greater. God has greater. Are you hearing me? God has greater for your life. God has greater for your life. It's not the will of God that you struggle. It's not the will of God that you be agitated. It's not the will of God that you be so discomfortable. It's not the will of God. God want us to beloved above all things. I wish that you're prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. In this fast, God is calling us in this fast. In this fast, God is calling us to get closer to him because God has greater for us. God wants us to get closer to him. God wants us to draw nigh to him and he'll draw nigh unto us. God wanted, God wants to change the trajectory of what the folks say about you and I. Oh my God. God said, no, 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 we're going to change this. We're going to change this. We're not going to leave it be. No, no, no. We're going to change this. I, I, I know what the devil's trying to do, but we're going to change this. I know what the enemy's plan is, but we're going to change this. Oh, no, ma'am. No. Come on, Angela. God has a plan. God has a plan. And that plan that God has is far better than what anybody can imagine. Are you hearing me? And that's the reason why I stand firm today to tell the enemy, no matter what the weapon is, I want y'all to know we're winning. Why? Because God have graced us to win. 
Come on. God has graced us, Angela, to win. God have graced you to win. Come on, uh, Sister Laurie. God have graced you. Come on, Lanisha. God has graced you to win. And the, when you're graced to win, the enemy wants to bring stuff up to fight you. The enemy wants to bring stuff up to annihilate you. The enemy wants to bring stuff up to cause you uh, uh, to be discombobulated. But you got to tell the enemy, no, ma'am, uh-uh. No, no, no. I know what your plan is, but your plan is not going to work. Uh-uh. I know what your plan is. It's not going to work. No, no. Because I know that you're trying to destroy my faith. You're trying to destroy me from working, walking with God. You're trying to destroy me from uh, uh, staying uh, consecrated to God. No, no, no. I'm not going to allow you to do it because I'm standing firm. I'm going to stay firm on what God's plan is for my life. And because one thing I know about God, that God knows what the end is. Come on. He says, I know the thoughts I think to you. That's why in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, Angela, he says, let's move on to perfection. He says, let's remove on. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, he said, let's move on to perfection. Not repentance of the same dead works. We're still doing the same dead stuff over and over and over. And God said, no, no, no. We got to do better than that. We got to go beyond that. We can't allow ourselves to be discombobulated and disoriented. We want to move beyond that. Why God wants us to move beyond that? Because God has a plan for our life, right? God, you're, you're, the, the stagnation is not the plane that God wants for you. Come on. I want you right there behind your microphone, right where you are. I want you to holler right where you are. Stagnation is not the plane for my life. No, God did not. No, no, no. no I, I refuse to let the devil win. God did not and God isn't allowing stagnation to be our rulership. Because God says in Hebrews 6, let us go on to perfection. Right? He said, come on, we got to move on from this. We're not staying here. No, the devil is a liar. Somebody need to open up your mouth where you are and say, the devil is a liar. Over my children, over my family, the devil is a liar. No, I am not going to allow myself to be overwhelmed. No, I'm not going to allow myself to be overwhelmed. No, 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 I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not letting sickness and disease change me. I'm not going to allow people to do what they want to do to me. No, I'm going to put a pause. I'm going to put a period. Matter of fact, watch this, a comma is a pause. We ain't putting no commas. We putting a period. We putting a period and we changing the statement. We changing the paragraph. We changing the sentence. We about to rewrite a whole nother chapter concerning. Matter of fact, we're not going to rewrite another chapter. In this same paragraph, we're going we're gonna to bring, we're going to put a period and bring a conclusion. And we're going to write our own conclusion of the matter. Are you hearing me? The devil is a liar. We're not going to allow the enemy. We are not going to allow the enemy to cause us to be at a place where, oh, I don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. We know where to go. We know what to do. The devil is a liar. We know what to do. And we're going to stand firm on God's word. We're going to stand firm on God's word. We're going to stand on the fact that God is more than able. We're going to stand on the fact that God can do it exceedingly and the abundantly. We're going to stand on the fact that God is still in control. We're going to stand on the fact that God is still, come on, God is still in control. God is still in control. Come on, Linda, period. Come on, Angela, that's it. We, that period is there for a reason. Are y'all hearing me? God is in control. And no matter what nobody say, no matter what nobody say, God is still in control of it. Watch this. All right. So let's go to the let's go to the uh, Hebrews the sixth chapter. Let's go to Hebrews sixth chapter. And 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 here it goes. Oh, I wanted I wanted to say this about Proverbs three. Three. He says, uh, uh, for my son, forget not the law, but let the, let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days, comma, and long life, comma, and peace, comma, shall they add to thee. If you keep the law and the commandment of God, it's going to give you long days, long life, and peace. It, that The commandment and the law of God is going to give unto you. It's going to be added unto you. Then verse 28 says, oh, I love this. This is, why, this is why I am like I am. Look, verse 26 says, for the Lord shall, for the Lord shall be thy confidant. Are you hearing me? Laura, the Lord is our confidence. Who is our confidence? The Lord is. 
Come on, I really, I need y'all to share this on your page. I need y'all to share this on your page. I need y'all to share this on your page and I need you to start tagging people because somebody need to know, you got to help me evangelize people of God. You got to help me evangelize because somebody's going through a state of oppression. Somebody's going through a state of, of, of confusion, of suicide, of, of, of failure or whatever. And they need to hear what you are hearing. So I need you to share it on your page and I need you to start putting people names in that comment. Come on here so that they can tag him because I made it public so people can have it on because I'm, I'm, I'm like really, I'm, I can't add nobody else to my page. I got another page I'm gonna have to start uh, sharing stuff to there too, but I really can't add nobody else to my page. I really need to take a lot of people on. See, that's that, that's that stuff right there. See that attachment? Y'all see that word attachment? God just gave me a revelation. I need to go into my Facebook and do a, a, a kingdom Holy Ghost sweep. Get all them people off of my page that don't mean no good, especially all those people that's always commenting and telling me, hey, I heard what you said, man of God. Uh, can you can you expand furthermore? No, I'm not about to find some furthermore. I'm, I said it. I'm not about to change it. I'm not about to go back and rearrange nothing. I said it. You don't like it, move on to the next preacher. You got 10,000 churches you can stop by. Don't stop by this one if you don't like what I'm saying. I don't preach tradition. I don't preach rhetoric of theology. I don't preach propaganda of, of of, of church and traditional stuff. I preach what God gave me revelation and the word of life, the realistic and the, re the reality of God's word and the reality of which we're dealing with. We are dealing with so much of realistic stuff that we need somebody just to be transparent and say, listen, Paul, stop, take a break. Pay attention over here. Look at me, look at me real good. I got something to tell you. You might be going through a storm, but guess what? God is celebrating you in that storm you're going through. Ain't that's reality? How, how many of y'all tired of that? How many of y'all saying, man, I'm sick and tired of this foolery. Man, I'm sick and tired. You're telling me to pay my tithes. You're telling me to give my offer. You're telling me to do this. You're telling me to shout, stand up, turn around, sit down. You're telling me to do all this stuff, right? I'm doing all this stuff, but ain't nothing working. The reality of it is Juan Bella is going to tell you, hey, I know you're in a storm. Hey, I know you're crying about it. Hey, I know you've been there five years, but guess what? God is right there in the midst of you. God is right there in that storm with you. God is concerned about you in that storm. And can I tell you something, my brother? God got you in that storm on purpose because he's getting ready to do something amazing that's going to shake your life. And oh my God, today, not only is he going to shake your life, but he's going to change the trajectory of your life and cause things to go to the next dimension in him. But you got to stay in the storm. Don't you come out of it. I'm not asking you for no offering. I didn't ask you to sow no seed. I didn't tell you, you give me the prophet a glass of water, you're going to reap a prophet's reward. I didn't tell you that. What I am going to tell you is that if you listen to this prophet, God's going to bring you out the storm, whether you give me a dime or not. Whether you say, let me bless you, man of God, with some breakfast or some lunch. I don't care because you know why? My equity is in the kingdom of God. My equity is in, and if I do what God commanded me to do, according to Proverbs 3, long days I'm going to have, long life I'm going to have, and peace is going to be added to my days. So if don't nobody, don't nobody, listen, if I tell you, uh, uh, overseer, uh, Apostle Sophia, if I tell you, oh my God, give me $100, and the Lord said seven days, then seven days come, guess what? You're still in the storm, because somebody robbed us. This this broadcast, I don't rob people. I don't rob people. I have a job. Now, there's so many things y'all can say about me. There's so many things that y'all can say about Juan Belloy. But one thing you can never say that I ever robbed you of your money. You can't say I robbed you of your money. You can't say I slept with your, your wives, your daughters, or your sons. You can't say that I disrupted your family. What disruption came to your family is when I start preaching the truth and somebody in your family realized, oh, wait a minute, y'all wrong. Because the word of God, apostles showed me right here in the word of God, y'all wrong, right? But you can't get up and say, I deliberately, no, because I'll tell you, I'll show you in the word. If the word don't say it, I don't understand. I don't care what your mom and daddy say. I don't care what your mom and daddy say, what your grandmama say. I don't care what your bishop told you. I don't care what your, what your intercessor told you, your personal prophets told you. If it's not in the word, Juan Bellard is not doing it. And Juan Bellard is not teaching it to the people. 
Amen. So, but I will say this to you, that the storm that you're in right now is mandatory for you to be there because when God pull you out of that storm, when God take you out of that, that whirlwind, when God take you out, you're going to look back and say, thank you, Juan Bellar, for not lying to me. You're going to say, thank you, Juan Bellar, for not telling me a story. Thank you for not stealing my money, but thank you for standing flat foot, sitting in your car one day with your Nike hat on your head. And I might have my black leather, black, black, matter like black lives matter hat or oh, i may have my other hat on you know my 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 poor baby she died she died two weeks ago and um she was my dialysis patient i would pick up every day and she gave me this hat she said she said i'm i'm old enough to be your mama or your grandmama and then when i told her how old i was she said oh, no i'm old enough to be your mama baby she said but you are hot and, and you're single, right? And she went to the store, she saw this hat, and she gave she gave me two of them. And she gave me this hat, right? It says, you are hot. And I'm, she said, if you are, it says, if you are hot, I'm single. And and so you might see this hat on my head, but I, I, back to my, my point. My, my point that I'm making to you is that I, I, my job and my assignment is to make sure that you reach your potential goal. And if I can, see, let me tell you how blessed I am. When I see you reaching your potential goal in God, I get so happy. Because I'd be like, yes, God, we got another one. Yes, God, you did it. God be to God be the glory. Man, praise God for all, for all things. Man, I'd be excited. I'd be excited like somebody just gave me $10 million, right? Because all I want to do is see people reach their goals. Because what profit a man to gain the world then lose his soul? I'm not losing my soul for propagandas or, or, or theological rhetorics. I'm not losing my soul for misinformation and disinformation. I'm not losing my soul and I'm lose, not losing my place in the kingdom. I work so hard to love on people that, that, that love to hate me. I work so hard to love on people that don't even think that I fit the criteria of their company. I work so hard to love and do what the Bible say do. But at the end of the day, Look and live, my brother and sister live. Look to Jesus Christ and live. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. Only that you look and live. Come on, Mr. Smith. Come on, sis. Come on. Come on. Come on, apostle. Come on. Oh, my God. And God is giving us to this place where he's shifting us and he rearranging us. So look what he says in Proverbs 3. For the Lord shall be thy confidence. So many of y'all be asking, uh, possible Lord, uh, brother Juan, brother, you know, and I ain't sick on time. So if y'all call me brother, I ain't mad. Because a lot of people that call me brother know who I am. You know what I'm saying? And, and but however, Proverbs 2 and 26 says, 3 and 26 says, For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and he shall keep thy foot from being taken. Oh, come on, Mystic, come on, girl. Come on, Lanisha, come on, Apostle Sophia. God is your confidence, and he's going to keep your feet from slipping or from being taken. Are oh, y'all hearing me? Oh, my amazing God. Ain't that good news? Ain't that good news? Oh, my God. And look what he says in verse 27. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Don't you withhold nothing. If you got the ability to do something good for somebody, do it. And don't let nobody get in your way. Don't let nobody tell you, well, you know, um, I would do it from Apostle Sophia, but you know, you know, you know, honey, let me tell you, honey, 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 let me tell you. Child, the streets is talking. No, you're a demon. You're a demon straight from hell. And you're going to hell with gasoline draws on, a cherry bomb hat on top of your head in a river called alcohol. You're a demon straight from hell. You're a demon straight from hell. If you got the power and the ability, bless you, uh, Overseer D, uh, Blackwell, and my brother, Sean. Listen, when God, if God, let me tell you something. If God give you, the, if it's in your power to do something for Overseer, uh, Blackwell and Pastor Sean Blackwell and you withhold it because somebody told you something about their past or somebody told you some storm they're in, you are a demon straight from hell and you deserve to burn in hell. Who are you? Who are you? Come on, Jalen. Who are you to have God will bless your hands or bless you with the ability to be functional in somebody's life? 
and you're going to withhold it because somebody told you about a storm a brother or sister going through or somebody told you that they're going through this or they're going through that but god put you put you in their way or in their life with the ability to make it happen and you fail to do so because you're trying to live by the rhetoric and the propagandas of what other people may feel or think about a person you are demon straight from hell and you're going to hell and you deserve to go to hell you're going you're going i don't care if you go for but two seconds you're going you are going because that is not the will of God. But the Proverbs of the book of wisdom says, withhold not, Proverbs 3 and 27, withhold not good from them to whom it is due. If it's due to them, don't withhold it. When it's in your power of thine hand to do it, do it. Look, 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 look what the look what the um the true passion version says. Boy, y'all know I love the word. Y'all know I'm a Bible person. I love the word. I be in church. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all, I be in church and people be preaching and saying stuff. And this one man, I went to church the other night. I, I ain't really, really, really wanted to go to that church. But um, I, I went. I went. And um, I, I ain't gonna lie. I went. And um, But anyway, I went and um, the man was preaching, 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 preaching. And he's saying, Apostle Lord, am I talking good? I did this. He's saying, Apostle, you hear me? I did this. Because, see, I'm in this season. I'm not about to amen everything that you're saying no more. You know, I've already been that person. I've always been that in this Negro. This is the Negro I am. If I don't like what you're saying, I ain't amening it. I'm going to keep quiet. And if I'm on the pulpit, I'm going to fix my face because I know a lot of people in the audience always look at me when I'm on the pulpit to see if I'm going to respond. And if I don't respond, you know what they do? They'll be like, Look at below. And when service is over, they say, they'll say, Unk, 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 come here, Unk. And I have to I have to run to my room. Or I have to get away. I'm like, <laughs> get away. Because I don't want nobody past a scene. I'm talking to me. And it's like, oh, Prophet Juan didn't, wouldn't agree me with that. Right? And that brother was saying, that brother was saying what he was saying. And he was saying, I can't remember what he was saying, just how much he, he wouldn't say nothing. But he was just going on. And he's a good man of God. But I'm like, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Right? And so I was just sitting down there and I say, um, uh-uh. So when service is over with and we got ready to go to the back, he said, you coming to the back? I said, no, because I know you don't want to talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. It was your revival. It was your service. Keep me out of it. I don't want to be a part of it. And I don't want nobody to see me going in the office with y'all. And if I go in that office, everybody going to believe that I'm in agreement with this foolishness. I am not in agreement with this foolishness. Okay? I believe that all souls belong to God. Whether you're straight, you're gay, you're bisexual, pansexual, trisexual, timosexual, libosexual, locosexual, hookosexual, nickosexual, hookosexual. I don't care what you are. Your soul belongs to God, and God have control of your soul. And no man, no woman, no boy, no girl can talk about the stuff that you've gone through or what battle you're fighting. Can't nobody talk about them because if your heart is evil towards the men and the women of God, if your heart is evil towards your past, if your heart is evil towards your mama and your daddy, if you have not had a pure heart to clean this mess up out of your heart between your mama and your daddy, and you're trying to be evangelist in the church, we need you to sit your, your hellish behind down and take two seats in the back row and be quiet for 20 days until you get delivered. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Why? It's because God, every soul belongs to God. So that's what it said. The Lord brought it back to my attention. The man was talking about people of perversion, lifestyles and whatnot and whatnot and how they go on this and they're going to do this and all this other stuff. You know, the Bible says, who can lay charge to the elect of God? I don't care what a person do, what a person have done. Brother Jalen, I don't care what a person have done. A person can make a mistake. If they go to God and say, Father, forgive me. Or go to God and say, God, I know this is wrong. And I've been that person before. You understand? I say, God, I know this is wrong, but I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for this. This was imposed on my life from a child or in birthing process or whoever my, when my mama slept with somebody in her coming up developing stage and, and, and she attached herself to some spirit that now I'm that this is a part of my life is something that 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 I'm dealing with. But God, I'm here. Here am I to worship you. Here am I to bow down. Here am I to say, God, for all together, you're lovely. You're worthy. I love you. Even though I may be a mess, God, my life may be ejected, but God, I love you. Do you know that no matter what mistake I make, God will say, look over that mistake. And he said, huh, y'all judging the outward appearance, but I see his heart. 
I see her heart. And the moment I can touch, the moment her heart is, a, if she allow me or he allow me to get in her heart and put my loving arms around them, man, I'm telling you what God will do. God will save you. Come on, Patrick. God will save you. God will deliver you. God will rearrange your life. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? My God today, because that's the kind of God we serve. We don't serve a God that will kill us at the moment we make mistakes, but we serve a God that looked at him. He'll close his eyes. He said, I'm going to keep my eyes closed on Juan. I'm going to keep my eyes closed because I know his heart. I know he loved me. I know he's a worshiper. Can't nobody beat him worshiping me. Can't nobody beat him praising me. And even though there may be something right there that I don't like, but because I'm a gracious and a merciful God, when Juan stand up and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'll open my eyes and start looking because I see the purpose I put in him. I see the call I put in him. I see the assignment I put in him. I see the passion that he has for the call, the assignment, and the purpose that I have in him. I see the drive that he's willing to drive. And he's willing to go a hundred miles an hour to reach a lost soul in the kingdom. Why somebody don't want to even go on a pulpit and preach the right word. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? And and when they when that's right, overseer uh, Blackwell. Come on, that's my sister. That's my Jamaican sister. My gosh, she's back in Detroit. Come on, woman of God. When God sees us, he sees the blood. He sees the blood because the blood, and when, when the blood is upon us, it's, it's a glassy color that when he look in, in, at it, it brings a reflection of himself and he can't judge himself. But while everybody else has seen us, everybody else has seen our inadequate and our malfunction, God says, I see the blood. I see the atonement. I see the redemption. I see the reason why my son came and died for a person like you, boy. And that's why when I get in church, I give God everything. I dance, I worship, I holler, I'll scream, I'll run. When they call for, when they call for, when they call for prayer, I'm not afraid to, to, to get on the prayer line if it's 2 o'clock in the morning and knowing that we got a prayer line at 530 are you hearing me? In the pandemic, y'all, in the pandemic for two years, for 24 months, are you hearing me? I was on a prayer line every morning, every morning, every day I was on a prayer line with people saying, prophet, we need you to come in and pray with us. We need you to, and there was an alliance that I was a part of. I, I got a part of it in the, in the, uh, in the pandemic and 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 um we, it was all a hundred and some people of us praying and praying and god began to move and bring give me words of wisdom and it seemed like nobody wanted to talk let the lord do it 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 and i felt overwhelmed i felt used i felt uh as a doormat i felt as if i was just being mistreated by these brethren in the kingdom i don't know what that was that just happened y'all I did. I, I just felt I just felt certain kind of ways that stuff was being done and, and, and I was being mishandled and mistreated. And I just felt like I said, God, this is wrong. This is evil. But I never stopped, y'all. I stayed on the wall. And then I heard conversation that was taking place. I heard conversation that was taking place. And I said, man, but every time we got up for prayer, I got up for prayer. I did a tw I, every, every day, y'all, I did a prayer, a 12 noon, every day in the pandemic. My God, my media department got over 400 videos of me in the pandemic. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? If not more. But yet people came into the line. Yet people came in and they, and, and they got the prophetic word. They got the profound word. And when we opened up the church again and things took place, Everybody became what? A, a critic. Everybody, well, where is such and such? Why this person not with you? Well, oh, we see him over here. We see her over there. Oh, we see this one. Oh, they must have left the Lord. But in the midst of all of that in the pandemic, it was the Lord holding them fast. Because you know why Proverbs, I'm going to tell you why. Because Proverbs 26, uh, th 3 and 26, in the true passion, it says, because God is in, because God is your confidence in the time of crisis, Keep your heart at rest in every situation. Verse 27 says, and this is talking about wisdom of revelation. Why would you withhold payment on your debt when you have the ability to pay it? Just do it. Just do it. Look, look, look at my CVD version. Y'all know I love that CVD version. That CVD version. Y'all know I love it. Oh my God. You can be sure that the Lord will protect you from harm. That's to verse 26. 
Look what verse 27 says, do all you can for everyone who deserve your help. So in that pandemic, in that pandemic, I was available for everybody in that alliance, in my church that was connected to me. Any resources, anything that I found out, I pass it on to people. I pass it on. And said, come on, y'all, let's get it so the church can grow. And the moment we opened up our church again, and they didn't see certain faces anymore, they went into the critic stage and start criticizing. But I'm good. I'm good. I'm not mad with nobody. Because you know why? I was not born a twin. I came in this world all by myself. And the storms from my childhood, I had to endure them by myself. The fights that I had in my life, I had to endure them by myself. The rejection, the abandonment, the letdown, uh, left to the side, kick to the curb, I had to endure them all by myself. And one thing I learned about God, surely the Lord knows the righteous. Surely the Lord knows his own. Oh, you hear me? The right, the, 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 the foundation of the righteous is sure. That's the scripture. The foundation of the righteous is sure. And God knows his own. Oh, you hear me? I thank you today. I thank each and every one of you today that came in. But look what that verse 28 says. Don't tell your neighbor to come back tomorrow if you can help them today. Don't try to be mean to your neighbors who trust you. Are you hearing me? And there are some people trust you because they know you got it. There are some people trust me because they know I can handle the storms in their lives. There are some people can trust me because they know that, they, that I can keep the secrets. Some folks say, you know, honey, I've got a lot of secrets. See these two phones I have right here? I got a lot of text message, emails, and everything. But it's ain't for me to do that. And some I have deleted it. This year I started deleting a lot of emails. I said, it's too many emails. I, 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 I don't need all this. I've deleted stuff out of my Facebook. Why? It doesn't matter to me anymore. And there's a lot of stuff that people have said uh, behind my back, but yet in my face, they, they, they hug me and say, we love you, Juan. You, you my brother. We got you. We ain't gonna let nobody do this. And the very ones that say they ain't gonna let nobody do is the very ones that's, that's congregating to do it. And it's good. Why? Because the Lord watches out for his own. The eyes of the Lord is everywhere, beholding the good and evil. We close here. Hebrews 6 says, Hebrews 6. Now, I said all that because I need to help somebody because somebody's in a storm. Some, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking for a sympathy party because I'm too strong to be for sympathy. Many people that's on this live that knows me know that I've never, I never talk about my storms. Many people that's on this live right now can tell you, I never, ever talk about my storms. I never cry to people about certain things. The, if you're close to me, like Lanisha, uh, Sister Phyllis, you know, if you're close to me, you'll know something is wrong with me. But if you're not close to me and not around me all the time, you'll never know what's wrong with me. My own chief apostle often say, you want to talk? No, sir, I'm good. My own first presider, Bishop Linton Crenshaw, would say, just call and check on you. You good? I'm good. You sure you don't have to be in this storm by yourself, brother? I'm like, I'm good. My, my, my sister, Apostle Tanya Mitchell, would reach out. I was thinking about you. Bishop Straffin, Stephanie Straffin, I was thinking about you. You good? You all right? And I'll say, yeah. And maybe sometime between Apostle Mitchell and, a, and Bishop Straffin, I may vocalize something to them because they're my sisters, you know. And, but other than that, I don't, because you know why? I don't look for sympathy because in him I live, in him I move, in him I have all my beings. And because I'm in him, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me, I have the power to condemn it in judgment. And not only that, wait a minute, watch, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. And I understand what Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, Juan, they're good and they're not evil. And so because of that, think on these things, whatever things are pure and just and of a good report. But let me tell you who I, who I thank God for that. There's a woman of God that went to sleep to be with the Lord some years ago. Her name was none other than Apostle Gloria Bridges. Gloria Johnson, Gloria Bridges. I won't call it another marriage name, but B Bridges and Johnson, those are the two names I knew her by 25 years ago, almost 30 years ago. She walked in my life and I saw her at a service and I was preaching and she walked up to me. She said, 
I want you to know I love you. I said, thank you. I said, what's your name? She said, I'm Pastor Bridges. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm Apostle Gloria Bridges. I'm Pastor. I'm with uh, Spread the Word uh, Ministry. Wow. No, watch, her church is very small. And I came out of a big church. The death of my father had taken place. And so I was just vagabonding. And when she walked away, I said, what's your phone number? She gave it to me. I said, where's your church? She gave it to me. And guess what? I found myself at that woman's church. I found myself letting her cover me. I was under Bishop Rhonda Evans in New Orleans. Had a nice size church. But I was preaching. It was something about Apostle Gloria Bridges that she met me right where I was. And she poured into me. She covered me in prayer. She covered me and she labored with me. She poured into me stuff. She told me to keep fast the stuff that dad had taught me. And today, one thing she told me, she said, trust people, because that's what God wanted to do. But she said, I want you to trust God when all else fails. She's going on to be with the Lord, but I've trusted God because that's what she taught me to do, to trust God. And I want to encourage you today to trust God. Have confidence in your brothers and sisters because it's needful. It's very needful for us to have confidence with each other, but trust God. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but in thee, O oh God, do we put our trust in you. Amen. I love each and every one of you, but I want you to hold fast to Hebrews 6. I didn't get to it, but Hebrews 6. Let us move on to perfection. No longer repentance of dead work. Move forward. In him we live and move. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for these, your sons and daughters. Oh, my God. <clears throat> these are your sons and daughters. These are your gracious people. Father, thank you for giving me the tongue of the learning, the tongue of the wisdom. Father, I'm asking you to keep my body as I endure this fast. And keep all of our bodies as we endure this fast. Father, as I'm taking this dry fast for this week, I'm asking you to keep my body, keep my body strong. Keep me strong. Keep me, God, as we're in these 10 days of awe. Help us to uh, repent and to forgive and to let go. As we're in the Rosh Hashanah and the 10 days and the days of atonement coming in, help us, Father. Help us in this month as we cry out to you. We cry out to you and we cry out to you with mercy and grace. And asking you, Father, to have thine own way. Cover us with your blood. Father, somebody need a bill to be paid. Somebody needs you to open a door. Somebody need a new job. Somebody need peace on the job, peace in the home, peace in their marriage and their ministry and their children. Somebody needs some door to be open and God I touch and agree with my brother and my sister right now in the name of Jesus and God I touch and agree that you will move on their behalf I touch and agree that you will make a way out of no way and that you'll turn things around father I speak healing I speak deliverance I speak grace I speak love over my brother love over my sister in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare that all is well and everything shall be in divine honor father Father, I thank you for every person that signed on today. Father, have thine own way today in their life and meet them at the very point of their need, God. And then, God, I want you to shake the very foundation of their enemy. Shake their enemy until the enemy can't be shaken no more. And we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory because we know that thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. World without end. Amen. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. I love you and I love you with the love of God. And remember that all is well and everything is in divine honor. Bless you, Mama Judy. That's my God, Mama. Amen, Mama Judy. And um, and 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 Dad, Pops, uh, Lewis. Oh my God, that's my Macon family, y'all. Um, bless you. You know, I got a Cincinnati family. Uh, Apostle Sophia Burton Bailey. That that that's my sis right there. That's my sis right there. I can't wait. Listen, y'all. I need y'all to do something for me. I need everybody to do something for me, okay? Those of you 
I really do. I need, I need all of y'all to do something for me. Amen. Uh, I'm having a conference on the end of the month. So we're fasting and praying all of this month. And I'm fasting for you because we fast every October. But we're fasting for the conference and we're fasting for you. And I want y'all to pray because I'm doing something I never did, which is called a dry fast. We're well, not a dry fast. It's not a dry fast because I'm drinking. I get this. It's a, it's a, it's a, a Arden Garden pure lemon cleanse and I put it in water and that's all I've been drinking, right? I just been doing this, you know, put it in my, in my water and I've been drinking. So it's kind of like a dry fence because you know, that lemon dries your mouth out and all that stuff, but I'm believing God for something. But listen, I want you to cover me in prayer while I cover you all in prayer, right? But I want you to sow. I want those of you that can and will. And listen, our conference is coming up. You see it on the flyer. I don't care if it's a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. Our registration is fifty dollars for our registration for the conference. And then we are uh, asking every adult to sow one hundred dollars. But watch this. If you're not uh, if you can't come to the conference or you, you would like to come to the conference, if you would like to come, inbox me, inbox me. And whoever invited you to the live, inbox them to come to the conference. Or you can go onto my page, onto my page, right? And you'll be able to see all the information. But on this live, you will see it. You will see it. And as you see it right now, whatever, if you want to cash, you have $20, $5, $10. Uh, the conference starts, the conference starts November the 1st. That's a Friday, Friday and Saturday. It's a two-day conference conference all right it's a two-day conference it will be friday it will start with pastor kamisha howard we would also have um overseer delphine morris we'll also have a uh, myself dr ann mercer on that friday from 5 30 to 8 o'clock we would have those sessions um kingdom medical sessions and impartation okay and then on saturday we're going to have minister mike phipps a uh, lady alexis um, Dr. Uh, Laris Bostic, Larika Bostic. We're gonna have um, uh, my young, my little nephew is gonna be there as well. Overseer uh, Reuben Austin. Then we're gonna have Bishop Terrence Bailey, Apostle Andrea Jackson. We're gonna have um, Apostle um, uh, 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 William Hansford. That's gonna be there. That's on the Saturday. And then on that Saturday, we're gonna close out with feet washing with me and Pastor Melanie. Me, Pastor Melanie, and whoever else wanna help with the feet washing. We we will be doing feet washing and communion. All right. We'll be doing feet washing and communion. But those of you say, man of God, I will not be able to make the conference. I will not be able to make the conference, but I would like to donate something towards. I would appreciate it. Men, women of God, you have all the way until November the 1st to do it. But if you want to start sewing in now and sew $10, $5 or whatever you want to sew in, you are more than welcome to do so. All right. And we appreciate it. It's going to help us to make sure that all things is finished and done. And we're just believing God. Amen. And listen, I want you to be excited is because why? Uh, right here in the city of Atlanta, those of you that are in Atlanta, in the Atlanta region, uh, uh, in the Atlanta region, those of you that's going to be in the Atlanta region, I want you to know we will be having Apostle Sophia Bailey. We will be having Apostle Sophia Bailey. We'll be having Dr. Professor uh, uh, Charlene Allen. Amen. There's going to be, we will have a summit, a kingdom summit on January the 23rd. January the 23rd. Let me make sure because I don't want y'all to. Yeah, January the 23rd, 24th, or the 24th, 25th. We will be having that uh, last full weekend of January. It's going to be the last full weekend of January. Um, so people will be flying in on the 23rd. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a wonderful luncheon. Uh, I'm going to be asking Pastor Kamisha Howard to help me with that luncheon on the 23rd. The 24th, we will be having our sim, um, our worship experience leaders, the five-fold worshiping. My God, we're going to have a leadership worshiping. And then we will also have a symposium on that Saturday. Amen. We're looking forward. We're going to be doing it probably at Dr. Hansford and Dr. Melanie Hansford Church out in McDonough, Georgia. Amen. And so we're believing God. And you know, that's my brother and sister. They have a nice facility, um, beautiful platform. Y'all, I want you to prepare yourself. If you're locally in Atlanta, I want you to prepare yourself and 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 just me help us help me build the kingdom of God. I don't want to be your pastor. I just want to be your kingdom brother. And I want you to be my kingdom sister, my kingdom brother. And let's come together and fortify ourselves and let's build a work without a struggle. 
Let's build a world without all the politics that comes with building the kingdom of God. Amen. And so we will have those two women of God dealing with um, leadership, dealing with building leadership, building uh, uh, Apostle Sophia. She's going to be building leadership on an apostolic standpoint and government as pastoring and the church. Uh, Dr. Uh, Charlene will be building leadership from a theological standpoint. Uh, the 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 theolo not the rhetoric or the propaganding of uh, propaganding of of theology, but the kingdom uh, revelation of theology, the theophysis of God. She's going to help us build how to know God and how to bring God into our leadership. That's going to be effective. She has her own theology library that she's written. She's she has a doctrine a doctoral. She's a professor of a theology school. Uh, we're also going to have Dr. Hansford. We're going to be doing some major things and i'm going to do for those young ministers that's going to be coming i'm going to have a special moment with the young leaders that's going to be a part of the conference those are young in ministry and young leaders i want to have an we that's why i'm going to have it at dr hansford church because we're going to have multiple spaces to operate and to function i'm telling you it's going to be exciting there will be a registration there will be food service we're going to be having lunch and we're going to be having an amazing time in the lord all right i love each and every one of you with the love of god i'm excited and listen i'm gonna see uh, if Apostle Sophia is going to be able to be on with me tomorrow, maybe she can get on because we come on at 1130 to 12 o'clock. I know I went over a little bit more, but I got excited because when I start talking about God, because she does have a job, I do have a job and I need to get back to my job. Right. So I'm going to see about tomorrow. Maybe overseer, I mean, uh, uh, Apostle uh, Sophia can come on with me tomorrow uh, for about 10, 15 minutes. And she can take a break for that so we can get right into it. All right. I love each and every one of you with the love of God. Go in peace. Sin no more. If by chance you miss me on the air catch me i got my rapture clothes on y'all i'm living rapture ready i'm on my way to heaven all right i love you with the love of god god bless you god keep you it's my prayer in jesus name we pray amen